Thank you for being here. Um, we're going to get started in just a few seconds. Like I said, my name is Sonia Maline. This is the Technology Source Virtual Roundtable. We have a really fun topic to discuss today. So, um, and for those who couldn't make it, we have this on record. So we will be posting this on our YouTube channel. Um, check out our YouTube channel. Every couple of weeks, we post a new uh, virtual event in case you missed the last one. So um, that's where you go. Uh, today, we have Airspring. <laughs> and Airspring is a provider we've worked with for many years. Um, a provider that I know near and dear because I have customers who work with them as well as my own business um, that works with Airspring and exactly the product that we're going to be talking about today. So that's kind of a cool thing. Have nothing but positive things to say and excited to, um, to learn more about them. And then also know when it's not a good fit, right? So we can uh, know that if we have customers or if you're a customer today, we'd also talk about those types of things. Um, just want to make sure to get it out all out on the table. Um, okay, so let's get started. Before we do, I just have a little housekeeping. As usual, we have a really fun giveaway. And thanks to Airspring, today is a $100 gift card. Uh, that will be for anyone who asks questions throughout this event. I will be adding your name to the bowl. You have a chance to win this gift card. Um, so good luck and ask great questions. Um, that have to do with what we're talking about. <laughs> um, so, well, I will introduce our, our speakers today. Um, we have Mr. Scott Haley. Uh, Scott is the National Director of Channel Programs with Airspring. He's a Texas native and telecom executive with a 20 plus year record in this, or in the, uh, in this world of technology. Um, he's been helpful in working for technology providers, as well as other organizations building partner programs around the uh, United States, uh, specializes in SD-WAN and cybersecurity, um, and we're excited to have Scott here today. Um, and, you know, today we're going to talk about, oh, and then we also have Clinton. Scott, I'll let you say hi and tell us where you're dialing in from today. You bet. So, hey, welcome, everybody. I'm actually coming in from Dallas-Fort Worth. So, I, she said, uh, Sonia said, I'm, I'm in Texas. Um, this is Clinton Devereaux. Uh, Clinton is our Director of Solutions Engineering at Airspring. He is up in the Maryland uh, area, I believe, aren't you, Clinton? Yes, Gambles, Maryland. So, there you go. There you go. So, uh, he's he, he knows all the technical stuff. Um, I can just kind of highlight some stuff for you, but if you've got good questions, he's the man. Okay, awesome. Well, we're happy to have both of you. Um, and so today we're going to talk about SD-WAN, but not just any SD-WAN. We're going to talk about this something that's a little different. So because of its name, right, SD-WAN, Software Defined Wide Area Network, it is often thought of as being relevant for companies with multiple sites. But SD-WAN can do wonders for many types of businesses, many types of organizations, including single sites. So as we were talking about just a few seconds ago before we um, came online here, uh, Scott and I were just were chatting about, um, you know, organizations that are maybe remote organizations, uh, single site, you know, maybe they're workers working from home, uh, maybe unreliable internet connections. Um, there's just so many businesses out there. In fact, Scott, I think you said it was like 90% of businesses are just single site businesses. Correct. Right. That's and correct. so if we, you know, if we're talking about the majority of businesses being single site businesses, then this product is for the majority of businesses. So um, at, as a, you know, remotely located uh, person with shaky internet connection, um, I can say using this product, uh, which is SD-WAN, the Velo Cloud SD-WAN, um, it works wonders. And, you know, I feel a lot more comfortable working from home and having um, this product myself. So um, just wanted to put that out there. And then also, um, how can we understand if this does fit into a description for a company as something that could solve issues? And like issues would be, like I said, video, you know, glitchiness or um, even VoIP phone calls, right? If we're on the phone and, and we're losing that, having that packet loss and jitter and those types of concerns, is SD-WAN a viable solution? And I, I think I'll just pass that question off to you, um, Scott and, and Clinton. 
Absolutely. Do you want me to to start sharing my screen or? Sure. And 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 answer that question. Is it is it a viable solution for a single site? Ab I mean, just because I'm trying to <laughs> doesn't mean yes. everybody will. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, with voice, without getting into the weeds on anything, voice um, is very subject to latency and jitter. So packet loss, data, not so much, but voice, it really, really is. And so that one of the biggest, biggest benefits of SD-WAN as it relates to voice is it smooths out, it evens out, takes out the highs and the lows of that packet loss and that jitter. And so it creates a stable circuit that's, that really amplifies voice well. So whether you are a five-person single-site office or 500 uh, single-site person single-site office, if you're on, if you're using UCAS, it's you need SD WAN. I, I wouldn't use UCAS without SD WAN, uh, even with a fiber circuit. So. Right, and as more and more companies are going with cloud-based products, I, I was just working with um, a customer yesterday. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Technology Source, we work with customers all over the world, um, and our clients range from single site locations to large, large enterprise organizations. And we help them find the solutions that are, are right for them. And this organization that I was just working with yesterday, it, um, you know, they're exactly what we're talking about. You know, they have maybe three different locations, but none of them are really working together because they're all their own independent businesses. And they're having some struggles with um, a remote, you know, area. So, that would be like the ideal type of customer that we're talking about here. So awesome. Yeah, let's learn more about why we would want to introduce uh, AirSpring to one of these single site locations. Absolutely. So can you see my screen? Yeah, it looks great. Great, great. Just want to make sure. So obviously, it's a picture of myself. I'm the one in the uh, black eye patch. And uh, there's Clinton uh, yeah, as well. We so um, AirSpring, real, real high level, AirSpring is a managed service provider. Um, we do network, SD-WAN security, voice. Um, we actually do it globally, not just domestically. Um, a key factor for us is that I think is important for both partners and for customers. We are a family owned and operated business. So um, three brothers own and operate the company on a daily basis. And we're 21 years old this year. So why am I not switching? There we go. So whether you're a, an end user customer or whether you're a partner trying to advise and, and support customers, here's some questions to ask yourself um, as a business. Are you adopting more cloud-based applications? I think we've talked about that. More and more people are, whether they're SaaS applications, Salesforce in the cloud, UCAS. A lot of businesses now obviously have gone to UCAS as they're turning down the, uh, uh, the analog copper network for, for POTS lines. Um, the next question is, what happens to your business if your network goes down? So resiliency and business continuity are huge things. You know, nowadays, the Internet and your connectivity is really a utility. It's as important as electricity. It used to be only if you lost electricity, your phone system went down, your whatever, you know, you couldn't run computers. Well, nowadays, if your Internet's down, you're down. Um, and so it's really, really important. Um, are you running into bandwidth limitations uh, when you've got remote locations, remote users, um, things like that? The other thing that's happening nowadays is um, you're seeing a lot of remote workers. So you may have 50 people in an office and you may have 10 other people spread out across the country. In fact, that's the case with AirSpring. We've got now people all over the globe. Um, and so SD-WAN is crucial for us. Um, the last question I would ask uh, for a business owner is, do you want to build and manage your own SD-WAN, even if it's single site, or do you want it delivered as a service and have a professional infrastructure, professional engineers supporting it? That's what we want to offer people. Now, one of the things that we do offer is we, we do co-manage if a customer wants it. We actually give a customer both read and write access, not just read only, if they want it, but they need to be technically capable to do so. So, real quick, this infrastructure right here is an example. It says branch location, but think of this as a single site. So this is a single site business. This is traditional. They would go out to either a data center or something like that over an MPLS circuit if they want security. They've got the expense of an MPLS circuit. Maybe they have one fiber circuit, that type deal. 
or maybe they've even got one fiber circuit, but they have a backup, but it's typically active passive in this type of scenario, which means if one circuit fails, that means the network goes down until you physically switch over to the other network. So that means calls drop, all that kind of stuff. With SD-WAN architecture, even on a single site, we can now put multiple paths or multiple transport methods to get out. So these are all different type of internet connectivities. So let's say that your, your main one is a fiber DIA circuit, but maybe I also want 4G LTE as a backup. And you know what? I've got cable broadband that's available as well. So I've got that. I've got a tertiary network here, even though it's single site. So I've got automatic failover. So how does SD-WAN actually work? Not going to go into details. I couldn't if I wanted to anyway, but it's essentially, it's a network running on top of a network. So you, you still have a physical network there, but SD-WAN is a virtual network that's on top of it, and that allows you to now run that network via software controls, not have to physically go and turn knobs and move switches and, and so forth. So why switch to SD-WAN? Um, SD-WAN offers improved service, flexibility. Resiliency is a really important term for both partners and end-user customers. A resilient network means it's not only stable, but it also means that in a disaster, that network keeps working. And, and Clinton can get into that if he wants to a little bit later. There's also enhanced security. We do provide, as a company, um, actual security platforms. Fortinet is our primary security platform. But inherent in SD-WAN, you can actually write security policies as well, as well as um, SD-WAN is encrypted, which makes a big, big difference. So here's some top reasons. We're not going to go through a, we're going to go through these pretty quick. But reason number one, independence and flexibility. So we've already kind of talked about that. You can have whatever type circuit uh, that's available. We do fiber, fiber broadband, coax, satellite, fixed wireless, 4G LTE, 5G where it's available. We can do any of those paths to get people out from their business to the world out here, that, whether it's a data center, whether it's a cloud company, whatever the, the application is. Reason number two is security. I already kind of talked about that. There's just inherent security features that you can do with SD-WAN that you can't do in a traditional network. Reason number three is smart pathway control. So we can actually steer traffic. And what I mean by that is a real simple example. Let's say that you've got a single site hotel. In that hotel, they're giving guests, all their guests Wi-Fi application. They've got a gig circuit into that hotel. They only need about 200 megabits of bandwidth for their actual running their business that they want protected, that their data. And that other 800 megs is just guest Wi-Fi. They don't care if it's protected or not in, in this sense because their data is segmented. What we can do that a lot of providers can't do is a lot of providers, with, if they're going to do SD-WAN, they actually have to size the SD-WAN for the full gig, which means you're paying for a full gig bandwidth SD-WAN box and license. Where we're different, we can actually segment that and partition the traffic. So we can only run, we could configure a 200 meg license, 200 meg box that they're going to pay for, and the rest of the Wi-Fi traffic, although we can still give some benefit to it, it's not going to go through the SD-WAN box for the secure applications we're trying to do. It's just a little unique fit, uh, uh, feature, but it's really important because it's really cost effective. It makes a huge difference. Reason number four, network resiliency. We've kind of talked about that a, a little bit. Um, the other is application performance. Everything out there now, I don't care what size business you are, they're running applications via the Internet, whether it's formally through a cloud, public or private, whether they're accessing Salesforce remotely, whatever, um, or they're even using UCAS on-premise, but it's got to get out. All those applications, you need a stable environment, a stable connectivity. That's what SD-WAN provides for you. And then lastly, business growth, expansion, and business agility. We're talking about, we're focusing on single sites, but it also allows you to, for example, a remote worker. While we don't necessarily want to put an SD-WAN box at every remote worker's home, what we are seeing is we're seeing some executives that also work from home, and they're wanting to put an SD-WAN box in their home, and they're wanting to run multiple uh, DIA circuits out of their house. They provide the circuits. We don't do residential. But um, we could do 4G LTE, though. That would be the exception. So that's where we're, we're happening. But also a lot of single-site businesses, as they grow, um, they start expanding into multi-locations. And so then it just becomes an add-on. Very easy.
So let's stop right there for a second. Sonia, any, any questions that have come in that need to be answered? Yes, we do have some questions. So um, just as a reminder, you are asking questions if you have any, and you will get entered into a drawing for a $100 gift card. So if you think of a good question, it's probably a good thing to do to ask it. That, because we want you to remember this is a round table. So we want your questions and comments and opinions and all that stuff. So just throw it out there. Um, and it will go, you'll go into a drawing and get a chance to win. So I know that I'm just repeating that because I see several new people that just joined. So thank you. Um, so question from Cal H is in hotel. What are some distinct differences? And it's like we planted this question. So thank you, Cal. What are some distinct differences at a, as a provider when compared to other SD-WAN companies? So that's a, a great question. And you know, what would you say? <laughs> Maybe um, Clinton, wanna, do you wanna do you wanna sure. hop in there? Actually, uh, hi, everyone. Clinton Devereaux, Director of Solutions Engineering at Airspring. If I haven't spoken to any of you before, <clears throat> hello. And after today, I'm pretty oh, no. sure I'll be speaking to most of you after you've uh, uh, gleaned how exciting and, um, and innovative this, uh, this Airspring offering is in comparison to others. But I did mention to, uh, I, I responded to that question with uh, some answers. But one of the primary differences uh, between us and the, our, our competitors is that we own our own gateways. Um, Velo Cloud, um, VMware has created a, a, a huge public infrastructure. Uh, for the uh, for the gateways for the VCEs when deployed, they had to right. The reason being is because when you create a, a an SD when you create a WAN right, which is supposed to get you to the cloud right, you should have off ramps to the cloud right for those gateways. So they created this entire public infrastructure. Now, those are fantastic. Right, those are great. They can get you out to the internet and uh, possibly to uh, the sanctioned SaaS destinations. But the problem is, is that they are public and they are being utilized by everyone else. And they, they don't quite give you the option of doing what we do with our licensing. You can't, can't flexualize, and I'm gonna use that word, flexualize the licensing, meaning Scott said earlier, if you buy a one gig box, right? If you buy an SD-WAN edge that supports one gig, right? Then you must, you must, must, must put a one gig tunnel on that. And that's a lot of money, especially if like Scott mentioned before, all you're trying to do is protect 200 megs of that one gig. Why should you pay for one gig when you're only trying to protect 200 meg? That's the flexible licensing component, which allows us to, which our own gateways allows us to do. That's huge. The second, uh, the second differentiator is the fact that because we own our own gateways, now we can route traffic for you to sanction SaaS destinations. We have a product called MultiCloud Connect, and I know Scott said don't get into that, but <laughs> MultiCloud Connect is sort of like a super highway to other clouds, Google Cloud, Azure. Right, you want to use your SD WAN to get you to those clouds, and you want to extend the capability of SD WAN into those clouds, and you don't want to manage it either. Welcome to Airspring. That's another advantage. The tertiary advantage I'm going to say is, and I'm also going to talk more about this, is that with that, on that protected tunnel that we create, right, we we bind a public IP address which is NATed from a public IP address at the gateway. And we bind a public uh, slash 30 slash 29 right to the, to the box. So what that means is that you can take that box, unplug it from your ISPs, Comcast, Verizon, AT&T, doesn't matter, move to Australia, right? Plug that box into Australian telephone, you know, kangaroo, DIA, and whoever else, right? And your network comes back up. Right, because right that slash thirty is natted, that public slash thirty is being natted to the land side of that device. So your network even follows you now. You're not beholden to IP addresses. You know that whole debacle. I'm moving from one carrier to another. Can I take my IPs? Now you kind of can, right? So those are the three things that really, really strongly differentiate us from uh, from our competitors, and those are huge strengths. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Well, thank you for that answer. Um, <laughs> and then here is another, well, no, it's good. I, I yeah. remember when we first um, started talking, Clinton, you were talking about 
tachyon particle extraction theory, and I was a little worried that we would go off the deep end. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, a lot of this does get pretty technical, but I think if we just keep coming back to those business outcomes, um, that's what's going to keep us un in understanding. For those of us who are, are more on the business side here, you know, improved call quality, improved voice video, you know, improved access to your applications, all the things that we need on a day-to-day -day basis. And then that's, that's the outcome, right? So always going back to that, but to know you have your own gateways and that you can license the tunnels with that flexibility on demand. It's like you said, it's a huge differentiator. Um, and I'm, I'm sure there's more. I, I heard at the very beginning too, that family owned and operated. Um, I love that as a differentiator, just me personally. So that's pretty cool. Um, Takuya. N as in November says, would you give us some security advantages with SD-WAN? I'm guessing there's probably like a slide on that already, <laughs> but oh. great question, Takuya. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and in, in security with an SD-WAN is inherent. Uh, the, the, uh, the, I'm gonna have to get a little technical. Uh, VMware uh, created, or VeloCloud VMware created a, uh, a protocol uh, called dynamic multipath optimization. And that is the magic, right? That's the that's the protocol that allows the um, the traffic to bounce between connections, right? To not get interrupted when a circuit goes down, right? It's the protocol that uh, does all the link remediation, application steering, all that good stuff, right? So uh, that 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 protocol has inherent AES encryption. Right, which is 256 bit encryption. So yes, when you are routing traffic within the DMPO tunnel, when you're protecting traffic within the tunnel, it's encrypted with 256 bit encryption. That is underneath, that's probably the, it's, it's, it's a level of encryption underneath government level encryption, right? Government always has to have the best encryption, right? No one's broken 256 bit encryption yet. So yeah, it, it's complete, it is total security built in there. Right. Well, it's good to know. Mm -hmm. um, should we take one more question or let's hold, I see there's more questions. Let's hold those till the next stopping point because I see some good questions, but I want to yeah, hear yeah. some more. Okay. Okay. All right. So um, before I hand it off to Clinton, I've got a couple more slides that I just want to go through. So we, um, we actually offer three different SD-WAN platforms. So uh, VeloCloud, VM, VMware's VeloCloud is our primary platform. That's what the majority of our clients are on. It's our Cadillac platform in the sense of functioning and functionality and feature sets. Our SVP of Solution Engineering, Mike Chase, is actually on the uh, technology board for VMware. So we're extremely tied in uh, with them. In fact, uh, separate on the security side, we are actually one of only six providers globally that VMware is t uh, beta testing their SASE platform with. So um, yep. we're going to be releasing the SASE platform, um, yes, uh, in, in, at the end of Q2 probably is what we're kind of anticipating. So that's going to become part of the, uh, the SD-WAN security uh, enhancement, so to speak. We also do um, AirSpring Fortinet. So we, we offer Fortinet's full security platform, the FortiGate platform, but we also offer their, their SD-WAN as well. And then lastly, we also offer Cisco Meraki's SD-WAN with firewalls. So um, they each have different levels of service. I think um, primarily VeloCloud and Fortinet are kind of a little bit better higher level, Fort uh, VeloCloud being the highest. Cisco Meraki tends to be that customer that's maybe multi-location retail, doesn't have a lot of money to spend. It's the cheapest application. It's not as featured as, an, as a full featured SD-WAN, but it does provide some things, including a basic firewall. So I guess at the end of the day, what I'm saying is we can right size whatever the application need be for the customer. Sorry, move my. This is uh, Gartner's Magic Quadrant. This is 2021's Quadrant. And the reason why I'm showing you this is I want you to see that all three of our platforms we utilize are in the leader uh, Magic Quadrant. So Fortinet, VMware, and Cisco, all, all three uh, are in the leader platform. So I'm gonna hand it off on this next slide and let, uh, let, let Quentin kind of go from there. He's gonna talk a little bit about single side SD-WAN kind of making the case for it. And he's gonna talk about a little bit of the design and architecture uh, yeah. with AirSpring again without getting too much into without it. Without getting too much into it, guys. And don't, you know, don't let my 
gobbledygook, babbledybock, <laughs> you know, get in the way. It's really, they're just terminologies, industry uh, terms. And I will stop. When I say something's a little too kludgy, I'll stop and re-explain it. Uh, but yeah, you see the animation there about how when, when folks, and we talked about this uh, at the very beginning of the presentation, when folks think about sec, um, secure SD-WAN, right, they think about the WAN, right, wide area network in multiple locations, uh, when in fact, SD-WAN, right, is always two or more locations, regardless of even if it's one. And I'm going to tell you why, right? So whenever you're setting up a single site, you're always actually setting up a two site, because especially with with the uh, VeloCloud and Fortinet SD-WAN, there is the edge and then there is the gateway. And that's one of the other distinctions between uh, the VeloCloud, the Fortinet and the Meraki. Um, and that's why Meraki is third tier because there's no gateway component. It's like, okay, I'm, I got this SD-WAN, right? And I'm bopping between my locations, but how do I get out of here, right? Where do I, how do I get to Azure, right? How do I do that? There is no public cloud component with those particular SD-WAN solutions they're not really SD-WAN. They're sort of like SD-WAN light using IPsec. In 1970s called and said, I want my protocols back, right? Um, next slide. All right, so I, I don't want you guys to confuse failover, right, with SD-WAN because failover is actually a firewall function. There are so many uh, DHCP, right, firewall functions. If you look at the RFCs for a lot of these capabilities, you'll see that they, they originated in the firewalls, right, in, in the RFCs for firewalls and security, right? A, a failing over a circuit from one loop to another is not SD-WAN. It's a firewall function. And quite frankly, when you're dealing with real-time communications uh, apps like, like voice, video, things that need to get one to one into the other in real time, that kind of failover doesn't bode well because it, it, it creates what's called a cost. When it, when it switches over, you have to repropagate, right? Connections have to repropagate and everything. It's not what's called hitless, which is what the VeloCloud solution brings to the table, which is why we use it you know, when we're selling uh, Airspring, uh, all of our managed services because it's like, it's like uh, hot sauce. It just tastes good on everything. And again, it helps us to, uh, it allows us to extend the capability of that SD-WAN into our various clouds, uh, like the, uh, the, uh, the MPLS clouds, uh, our components of the segments of our network, also the, uh, the uh, multi-cloud connect segments of our network um, and, and many of the other ways. We can actually extend the capability into it. And that brings a whole bunch of other great things. Next slide. Right. So we talked about how VeloCloud VMware has public gateways, right? All throughout the world. The public gateways are there. They're on sitting on the edge of the internet, right? That's where they sit. And the reason why they are there is that so when you go to Dell, right, and you create and you buy a bunch of uh, VCEs, you get to use those public gateways, right, to get you somewhere else other than off that SD WAN. Right now, again, the question is, why would you want to use public gateways versus private gateways? And I mentioned before, it's because of the flexibility that, that the private gateways provide us the ability to, to right size the tunnels. Right. And also we have the ability to, to route traffic to manage services segments on our network. Right. And extend the capability of the protection that SD-WAN provides into those segments. So we've got all these gateways all over the world. You can see we're really covered. And we also have um, global SD-WAN. So we have high performance interconnects right between those different global segments to get traffic between them right, in, in, a, in a timely manner so that we create what's called global SD-WAN as well. Next slide. So I'm sorry about this somewhat <laughs> kludgy looking vi uh, visio. But I really wanted to explain and show the why SD-WAN, why the single site SD-WAN is so powerful, okay? Imagine a single location, right? And there are two internet connections. You have ISP1, ISP2 going into the VeloCloud edge, right? That VeloCloud edge 
then creates the what's called the DMPO tunnel, the protected tunnel, based on the amount of tunnel license you purchase. Right? Our competitors would, would cause you to buy a, uh, if you got a 620, you would have to buy a gig tunnel license. But because we are flexible, because we own our own gateways, you can size this tunnel license based on what you actually need. That in itself saves our customers literally hundreds of thousands of dollars per month in, compar in comparison to our competitors. So the next thing that we do is that we have our own gateways. So when that Velo Cloud Edge gets plugged into the two internet connections, it seeks out mama, right? It says, hey, where's mama? You know, how do I get out of here, right? It seeks out the gateway, establishes a connection. So that's actually two nodes, even though it's a single site, it's actually two nodes. You're not paying for the other one per se, but it's still two nodes and this gateway it's how we get the traffic off of the SD-WAN, right? And then routed into the various managed services segments that we own, as well as also out to the internet. So think about this. You take this uh, next slide. Ah, oh, nope, back. So you take that protected tunnel, that pseudo wire, right? You got two physical connections coming into the Velo Cloud Edge, but then the Velo Cloud Edge creates a pseudo wire, right? That's the fake connection, right? The protected tunnel between itself and the gateway. And then what we do is we apply a, a public IP address on that tunnel for you, right? So that's globally routable, right? And seen from, from, the, from the world, right? And then on the uh, behind the on the land side of the edge, we, we nat that public to a slash 31 private. And that's how your network can now follow you. Your IP, the IP addresses that we assign on that tunnel now follow you no matter where you go. That's huge. Ask any IT director, ask any IT guy, he will say, what? This is awesome. That, that is extremely powerful. So we can also protect your internet. Now, when your traffic goes through your firewall, out to the Velo Cloud Edge, up through that protected tunnel, through our gateway, out to the public internet, it's one hop to the internet. So now what you've done by virtue of the protected tunnel, just for the, in, just for internet, when you asymmetrically, or I'm sorry, when you symmetrically route your traffic in and out through that protected tunnel, right? You're actually protecting your internet traffic too. You're minimizing the number of hops, right? That your traffic has to take. Next slide. So hopefully you guys can feel how powerful that is. <laughs> I get excited when I talk about it. Now, one of the other things that we had talked about as well was the inability of our competitors to right size the tunnel. They can't do it. VeloCloud said, hey, you buy VCE 510 that supports 150 meg, you must put a 150 meg tunnel on that device. End of story. You have to pay the entire price. That's not fair. What if all you have to protect is, uh, like, like Scott said, what if you only have 10 megs of uh, traffic to protect really, right? Why should you pay for that much protected traffic? With us, you don't have to because we own our own gateways. Next slide. Even in the event of doubling, you can see how that increases the overall cost of SD-WAN without that level of flexibility. You got two locations now with 150 meg each, you got to get the full tunnel license and you also have to buy the full gateway license as well. If you're expecting the, all that traffic to be protected out to the internet, the costs to just become astronomical, right? It's, it's ridiculous. Why do you have to pay that? Next slide. Well, with us, you don't, right? You do not have to do so. In this example, we're protecting data, right? And we're protecting voice. No, we're protecting voice in this example, sorry. If you notice the, uh, the VCE 510, Velo Cloud Edge 510, it's a model of the box, right? That we deploy to the customer location. It supports up to 150 megs on the WAN side. Right. So let's say we put two uh, internet connections on it, you know, maybe 75 meg each to total 100, uh, 150 meg, right? 75 meg each, right? Then we can say, okay, all we're trying to do is protect the PBX SIP trunking up to AirSpring. All we need is a 10 meg tunnel. You can do that with us. You can flex, you don't have to get 150 meg license. You can get a 10 meg license because all you're trying to do is protect the voice. 
that brings your costs way down, allows you to take advantage of the power right, of SD-WAN, allows us to extend the capability and the power of SD-WAN into that voice segment to protect your voice. Right? So if ISP1 or DIA connection one goes down, guess what? And you're on a phone call, your phone call doesn't drop. You on a video call, ISP1 drops or DIA connection one drops, guess what? Your video doesn't fail. It keeps going. It's hitless. And in this next slide, you can see how, well, what the difference is. And just with the difference of 2% packet loss, how much difference that shows, especially with video. The one on the left is with 2% packet loss, right? The other one is, how, is what, even with 2% packet loss, how the VeloCloud Edge corrects the, uh, the performance of the, uh, of the traffic so that the end user experience is the one that's on the, on the right side. So again, going over some of the key benefits, bandwidth usage, link remediation, that means you know, jumping between the bad link and the good link and then back again when the good link comes up. Ease of configuration, the box basically comes pre-configured. You plug the internet connections in, it seeks out mama, makes a connection, it's done. Really, it really is that sim simple. You can customize it simply. I won't go into the, um, into the VeloCloud Orchestrator yet, but the Orchestrator really is an easy interface to navigate. Security, 256-bit encryption, right, N8. Um, it's PCI compliant as well. So if you have customers that have a PCI compliance and requirement, SD-WAN is perfect for that. Enhances the traffic quality, right, through application steering and other technologies. It's cost effective because we're flexible, right? We've got the flex licensing, huge. IP mobility. I can unplug the box from here and plug it in somewhere else and my network comes up the same way it was at the other location. I'm not beholden to my ISPs or my internet connections, IP addresses anymore. They move with me, right? IP mobility. And then sanctioned uh, SAS, right? Getting to those sanctioned SAS destinations, right? In a, in a, with, right? with the protection of DMPO. Next slide. Let's, let's take a break right there before we go to the next slide, Clinton. Okay. And let's yeah. see with Sonia, if she's got some, uh, some questions. Okay. We do have some questions. All right, so let's go with John. John B as in Bravo says, what are steps a company should take to prepare their network um, and their staff, right? for an implementation of SD-WAN. So what do, we, what do we do to get ready for something like this? You know, SD-WAN, software-defined wide area networking is actually an overlay technology. It basically is a, um, a context of the TCP IP stack that we all know and love that we're all using right now to connect between each other. And it's an overlay. It's, it's a software definition of that. So it uses, internet connections and other types of connections as a as a road to build itself on right so the first thing that you want to make sure you have is enough bandwidth those are some of the prerequisites that you want to consider as a customer you know do i have enough internet bandwidth or do i have enough of a underlay right to support the overlay that i want with sd-wan first question and then there are other uh, there, there are other considerations as well uh like um you know, where, you know, traffic flows, what are the applications that I'm using over my network, right? How do I want to order those in order of importance on this new SD-WAN? I have a lot more capability to link to applications steer now that I did before. So those are some of the, some of the things that you might want to consider. Great. Um, here's one from Gwen about, uh, with a small hospital question. I guess the argument for um, her organization is that it's not big enough for um, a WLAN, um, so why would they, they're not big enough for a WAN. So do you think, I think they're just, they're not big enough. They don't have enough need for such a, mm -hmm. a, a product. So how do you make the case for that? Yeah, because size doesn't matter. It's about impact in what you're trying to do as a small business, as a one man business, a tiny business. Uh, I, I've had three person businesses I've sold gigabit connections to. It's not because they were small, it's because they needed the bandwidth. You have to focus more on need versus size. 
when, when, when businesses come to you and they say things like this, I, I love to, I, when they come to me and say things like this, I love to isolate that, that the concern down to what it really is. It's really not about their size. It's probably about the cost in affordability. Because if, if anybody, if a small guy could drive a Ferrari, he wouldn't care. He wouldn't ask questions like this, right? They wouldn't ask questions like that. Well, is it, it's not good. No, no, no. It's all good. This technology is good for any size business. It's usually around, there's usually something you can isolate that all down to. And it's usually not the thing that they're talking about. Yeah. And I mean, as an IT director in a former life as an IT director, I, I would get a lot of pushback on budgets for a lot of different reasons. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, I have to make the case by saying, okay, remember this one time, you know, it's a lot of case studies. Like remember this one time when we were down for, six hours, you know, or remember the past, you know, two years when we've been having issues with these SaaS applications that now we've built our business around. And how do you like getting those phone calls and getting all those questions? And, you know, wouldn't it be better if we could increase those, you know, the speed to access, you know, it's like, it's like, okay, how can we make this a business conversation? Um, and justify the cost. And, and I mean, before you even get there, you have to know what the cost is, right? So let's look at what the cost is and then how you can and justify that. I was pleasantly surprised personally at the, at the cost. I was like, oh my gosh, that's totally worth it compared to mm -hmm. internet downtime, compared to, you know, choppy video, like that image that you showed, that was me in 2020. <laughs> so it's getting better, right? So i um, working on that. Um, well, great question, Gwen. I put you in the drawing. Next question um, is about Wi-Fi security, and does SD Wayne contribute anything to Wi-Fi security? Absolutely, Thanks, yeah. That's a, that. That is the type of traffic that you may wish to protect. Because remember when we were talking earlier about how um, the options with SD Wayne at at that box, you actually have the option of saying, "Hey, do I want to protect this traffic and send it through the tunnel?" Or do I want to not protect it and send it directly out to the ISP IP address of the ISP of whichever ISP you have connected to it? So you actually have that logic now. You know, if you if you have Salesforce, right? And Salesforce begs to go directly to the internet. I don't want to go through a tunnel. I'm built for the internet. I want you to come directly to me in your browser, right? You can send that traffic directly out through your ISP. Why would you want to send that out through your, your protected tunnel? You've got voice, video, and other traffic you'd rather protect. Right. So, yeah, you have the ability of um, of determining which traffic to send through uh, which tunnel. And um, I think I yeah. lost my train of thought. Nope, that's good. <laughs> All right. Next question. John B, as in Bravo, says the way Air Spring routes traffic. So back to what you were talking about is through its private gateways and provides portable IP addresses. This seems to remove the need for MPLS. Is that true? Uh, yeah, um, you know, SD-WAN is an MPLS killer, right? It really is because it gives, it gives the end user a lot more vision into the network than MPLS ever would. The thing we have to realize is that MPLS is private, but it's not secure. See, people, people conflate privacy with security. I've built many MPLS networks in my day. If I was at the layer three switch back in the CEO, I could plug into it tap into that VRF and look at the, all the traffic all day long. That's not security if I can do that. SD-WAN, on the other hand, does not let anyone into the secure tunnel at all, right? It's really private and it's really secure as well as it's uh, private as well as being secure. So it, 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 in PLS in comparison to, as there is no comparison, put it that yeah. way. There really isn't no comparison between uh, the uh, security that's inherent in one that really isn't in the other. It's privacy versus security in MPLS. You get yeah. both with SD-WAN. Okay, here's a question from Theo, and it's about those privileges that you mentioned early on. I think it was Scott that may have mentioned those, but giving those read and write access for those being able to um, only be qualified personnel, how do you, uh, what constitutes a, a qualification? Is it certification or is it just hey, a, a deep conversation and maybe some signatures? <laughs> yeah, I, th I think there was a mis uh, that was misrepresented. We will give read and or write access to anybody that wants it. If they break it, 
they got to pay for it, right? If they if they break it, then uh, you know we have to go in and fix what they've broken. Then we charge them, you know, per hour to fix it. But we will give rewrite access anyway. That's one of the benefits, and we give them actual administrative access to the orchestrator, right? Not this sort of dumbed down version that our competitors provide. We actually give you the actual administrative interface. So you can do all kinds of remote diagnostics. Uh, you can it, the, uh, the Velo Cloud option supports full stack BGP, which is what you're going to need if you're trying to integrate into anybody's MPLS network. Meraki doesn't do that, right? Not all MP, not all SD WAN solutions are alike, and not all SD WAN quote unquote SD WAN solutions are really SD WAN, right? Meraki is not SD WAN. I, I, I'll just tell you that right now. It's not. And Fortinet's not too far away from not being real SD-WAN. VeloCloud is SD-WAN, supports full stack BGP, all the routing protocols. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, we only have just under 15 minutes left. So let me ask you one more. Here's a good one from Cal H. And oh, thanks, by the way, Theo O as in Oscar. We got your name in the hat. Cal H as in hotel says, how do you measure quality of service for voice and video in your applications? Do you use tools? How does that work? Well, DMPO is, uh, has its own sort of uh, tools to measure and manage those things. And if you're using SD-WAN, you can go into the orchestrator, which I'd love to show you guys at some point, uh, yeah. but you can go into the orchestrator and you can actually see those applications, top talkers, how much bandwidth they're utilizing, um, you know, over other applications. Uh, you can see all of that information within the orchestrator. And uh, that, that's one of the big deals with us because we give the read and write access, customers can just move an application up in the uh, business policy and say, you know, I want Netflix to be top of the line. And they can do that on their own. <laughs> it's awesome. Or maybe yes. the opposite. <laughs> maybe the opposite, exactly. Um, just like you, Sonia, I have, I have SD-WAN at home. I have, a six, I have a 620, I have three connections, and I'm a hero. I am a hero at home. SUN does all the things that it says it does. I'm living proof. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, let's hear a little bit more and then we'll do our drawing. So um, that's yeah, good. So I, I'm going to I'm going to take it from here and I'm going to go pretty fast on some stuff just for the sake of time. <laughs> Sorry, Scott. Um, that's OK. So, so I just want to remind everybody, I always like to remind everybody that we do operate a global private network. So it's a big, big deal. So even single site companies, a lot of times they do a lot of business overseas. We are really big in the Asia PAC market. In fact, we're one of the few providers actually that gets in and out of China really well. So just, just keep us in mind when you have, uh, uh, we, do, we do prefer them to have a, a USA location because we're going to bill in US dollars and that kind of thing. But just, just remember, the other thing would be, and I'm not, is this is our global SD-WAN using the, the global private network, the GPN. Um, I just want you to visually see we truly are a global company now. So we're, we're not going to let Clinton even talk about this because we'll be here for an hour. But this is this is a quick snapshot of the of the orchestrator that he's talking about. So this orchestrator, even on single site, you can see at your site all kinds of different data that you'd want to see performance data, metrics, KPIs, all that kind of stuff. If you had a, a multi-location site, you can see all your sites in one pane of glass. So it's, it's truly, truly powerful. It's, it's worth doing a, a, a webinar on some, some time on its own. So I don't know if we've really got time to go through some of these. Clinton, do you want to talk about this manufacturing use case? Uh, I don't know if we, if we don't have time, you might want to do it. <laughs> no, do, do one, just let's do the manufacturing use case. And then we'll go through the other two really, really quick. So this is a particular, this was a use case for a manufacturer. You can see that the, the challenges that they had were many, a uh, huge increase in the number of connected and IOT devices, right? Internet of things. Um, if you're not familiar with that term, internet of things are just basically these small devices that connect to wireless local area networks. Uh, that are basically their devices, though, and they're on the wireless networks, and they, they have needs, right? And they should be measured, right? IoT devices, networking solutions, we need to be able to manage and, and leverage the different connections in terms of their priority, right? So they've got a lot of data flowing across their network. The challenge 
and there are other challenges, right? The result was of, of how uh, SD WAN collects all that data. We were just talking about the orchestrator, how it basically collects and aligns all that information in a common pane of glass for them to now see, right? So now they were, they were able to isolate the different segments based on process, business, and unit or department, and many other things. And that was just by virtue of just having SD WAN in the, in the, um, in the, uh, the orchestrator to, uh, to glean, right? And to look at the performance of the network, they were able to, able to do all these things and uh, see all these results. Okay. So Sonia, for the sake of time, I'm, going to, I'm not gonna go through these, these next use case samples, but I will send you the deck. So anybody that's on this webinar, they can, uh, they can get a copy of this deck and they'll, they'll actually see this. Um, oh, just can for you the just second. do healthcare really quick? That's my favorite. Sure, sure. <laughs> button, button, hop in, hop in there. Okay, so healthcare, uh, some of the challenges, the applications are powerful and sophisticated, lack of internet infrastructure, right? No reliable, consistent delivery of applications, all the things that SD, we were talking about DMPO. These are all things that SD-WAN can help to address, right? Applications are powerful and sophisticated. SD-WAN has a, a, a MIB or um, a management information base, basically solve these little things that basically identify all the different applications and defines them, right? They have a MIB of already like 5,000 plus applications and growing because the MIB is a result, of, uh, is a database of all of the SD-WAN that VeloCloud has throughout the world, right? All the customers, it's collecting all this stuff, right? And using AI uh, to create MIBs, right? And responses to those applications that suit those applications. Um, so tons of challenges, applications, powerful, sophisticated, too many running at the same time, lack of internet infrastructure to support the applications and the data transfer rate, and then no reliable, consistent delivery of those applications. Again, that's what SD-WAN does, DMPO, dynamic multipath optimization, protected those applications for the, them up and through and out of their <laughs> data center, right? So now their, their traffic has been protected up to the data center where the applications exist, and then user performance is enhanced 24 right all those things um and i, I didn't yeah. even read the, the results but yeah all those that's things okay and i would say the one thing i would add on to healthcare that's actually not on this one right now is something becoming really important with with healthcare is iot internet of things they're tagging for inventory purposes all kinds of metal, medical equipment all throughout the hospital it's become really important we don't have time to talk about it today but velo cloud <laughs> has released a new eni edge network intelligence uh, uh, software that we're actually <laughs> implementing right now. Um, it's an add-on. It's really cool. It reaches out into the network and identifies IoT devices, things like that. There's some really cool stuff that about that. So and let me and I, I have to right also now. And, and Scott, you can't say that without me adding too. That you know it, look edge and network intelligence is massive. It's used especially for healthcare because do you know how many battery powered backup devices back uh, battery backup devices they have? Right, there are all kinds of machines that have battery backups. Those batteries are, you know, deprecating in performance. Right, you need something that can, you know, keep track of all that stuff. Right, smart ups that are in hospitals. This E and I can tr keep track of those things. It can keep track of all that that the infrastructure. And, Powerful and the cost that. associated with the E and I for for customers. It's it's free with the first node. <laughs> Right. Yeah. When I saw yeah, that, I was like, well, there you yeah, go. It's pretty, yeah, it's, it, it's pretty cool. And I'll, I'll plug on March 24th, we actually have one of our, uh, one of Clinton's team is doing a, a one hour webinar on E&I. Yes. So yep. just, a, just, just an FYI. All right. We got to move here, Sonia. We're not going to get anywhere. So yep. let's go on. Let's, let's keep going on through. I'm not going to read the key benefits. We've, we've pounded on those. There's all kinds of benefits, whether you're single site or multi-site. I don't care if you're a one person office. There's great benefits for SD-WAN. Um, everybody's moving to the cloud at the end of the day. That's the bottom line. I mean, you've got to have stable internet connections for voice and data um, and for resiliency, for disaster recovery. The things we can do, we keep talking about IP mobility. Pick up that box and go plug it in somewhere else and it finds the network. Your network follows you. Those are just those are amazing things. That's, that's good for any size business. Doesn't matter at, at all. So that's the end of the end of the show, so to speak. Okay, with five minutes great. to spare. That's great. No, this has been okay. super educational and informative, which is what we aim to to do here. So thank you. Um, 
did you want to close it out? Because I have a drawing to do here. Any anything else to add? Um, no, yeah. I mean in real. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't let Clinton talk, or you'll you, well, you won't get five minutes back. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just just know this, and, and I think you said it best, um, Sonia. It's business outcomes. What what's what's the business really trying to accomplish? Whether they're trying to eliminate pain, or they have some objective that they can't do right now that they want to do. And so SD WAN, what you need to see is we've got a team of Clintons who can help the technical side. They can deal with design. They can help discover. They can get all that technical stuff. Just remember when as a salesperson, as a partner, an advisor, or as a business owner, all you care about is what can it do for me, right? What does it help me accomplish? I'm trying to run a business, not build an SD-WAN network. So at the end of the day, just remember that. We can support the technical side. You guys go, go get, get prepared and, and know about the benefits. I'll leave it there. Awesome. And then, Clint, did you have anything else before we do our drawing? <laughs> uh, nah, I kind of wanted to show the orchestrator, but I won't do that. <laughs> I got it okay. all fired up and ready to go. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to switch it up just a little. I said we had one $100 gift card, but I, I, if what if we do two 50s and one of them is a question that is kind of a trivia question? So get your fingers on the keyboard. I'm going to be looking at the chat. Um, so here's your trivia question sure. for the day. This is about Airspring and SD-WAN and all the things we've been talking about. So, so put your trivia thinking cap on. Um, and, and I'll be watching that chat box. The first uh, person on today's um, audience who, jo who joins in with the correct answer wins the $50 gift card. Okay, here's the question. Name two differentiators that Airspring brings to the table that you're not gonna find with another organization. Do, 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 do. All right, we've got, uh, okay, it looks like John had portable IS, uh, IP flexible license, but that was one. And then the next person down was Takuya. I don't know about that answer, it was close. Cal, routers and gateways, that's one, right? Or is that two? Next one is Raven sounding. Does anyone have both of those? Put them together. Put them together. <laughs> Cal ISP can be used anywhere. That's one. We got to put them together. Got to say two things. I'll give you the answer. Just split the cash. Just kidding. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so if you've answered, you can keep answering because no one said two things. You've all said just one thing. So if you're answered, just keep adding one more thing. Okay, looks like John got it. So John uh, John B, as in Bravo, congratulations on your $50 gift card. Woohoo! All right, one minute to spare. We got to do this drawing and then get out of here. I'll see you again in two weeks. Uh, we have an awesome event coming up in two weeks. You don't want to miss it. So stay tuned. I'll be sending out all the invites for that. All right, I'm not looking, I swear. Oh, one fell out. Should we do it? Should we do the one that fell out or put it back in? Do it. Do it? All right. Do it. John again. So John, congratulations. Uh -oh. You're just going to get that whole hundred dollars anyway. So. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Good job. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And we will see you again in a couple of weeks. Thank you to Scott and Clinton. Entertaining as always. Very educational. Um, look forward to seeing some of those single sites, obviously multi-sites, no brainer, right? Obviously, but this, I was, I was excited to hear we were doing something like this today for some of the single site locations who kind of get left out on some of the more enterprise products and services, um, but still deserve the outcomes, right? Those business outcomes. So, all right. Have a fabulous rest of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you.